Oh, hey there, YouTube. I'm back here today for another game review. And today, I'm very excited to check out Dwarves Dig, Delve, Die from Imbalance Games. This is for three to six players. Take about 30 minutes to play. It's for ages 13 plus. And in Dwarves Dig, Delve, Die, you're going to be taking some custom D6 dice that will be dwarves. You're going to be stacking them on top of other dice in order to try and trigger various different actions in order to gain oh so delicious gold. There's a light, simple drinking game. But it's not really a drinking game. It's kind of a family game. Not quite sure which one it wants to be. It tries to straddle that line. Does it succeed? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. All right, then. We're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Dwarves. Dig, Delve, Die. So first and foremost, we got our handy-dandy rule cards. Yes, you're going to get two rule cards in this game. Uh, and they leave a lot to be desired. There will be some questions about what happens with ties and various different things like that. But the biggest question is, I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to play this game, whether or not the gold is supposed to be shuffled into the deck or not. Now, here's my line of thinking. If you shuffle the gold into the deck, what's going to happen is there's the potential for people just to get three gold, which is incredibly swingy because you only need five gold to win the game. Also, there's cards that will say uh, gain a gold, and if there's no, you know, gold pile to go to. I don't know how you're supposed to gain a gold unless you're supposed to steal a gold, but there's also cards that specifically say steal a gold. So that really should have been covered in your handy dandy rule cards. And unfortunately it is not. So these leave a lot to be desired. Luckily though, once you understand what you're doing or what you think you're supposed to be doing, the game is a very simple and straightforward game to understand and to teach. So in Dwarves Dig, Delve, Die, you're trying to get five of these golds. You're gonna gain gold by triggering various different actions of cards that will be out here because at the end of your turn whichever whatever the lowest number is out here is going to trigger that action or actions depending on how many out there have that number what am i talking about let's just show you some game plan it'll make a lot more sense so everybody's going to start with one die and you see they had a nice little custom d6 with dwarves on them and then at the beginning of your turn you're always going to gain one additional die and you're going to roll if you ever can't gain a die because this pool is gone then you just don't gain one so we rolled two, and here's how this works. You have to place your dice on the cards that are out here. Right now, we obviously only have one card out here. And you're going to be stacking them on top of each other in numerical order. So you couldn't put a six below a one. So it has to go one, two, three, four, five, six. You also can put the same number. So if you put, you could go one, two, three, 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 uh, five, six, 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 six. So for this one, I have to put five and I have to put six. And now we're going to trigger the lowest number that is out here, which right now is a six. So that means we dig on six. So I draw the six die and that stays in front of me. That's a die I'll get to use next round. And then we trigger the action on this card. So reveal and resolve one new card. And this is a card that will always be out. So you always will be adding more cards. Uh, well, you always will have the potential to add more cards. So this one, gain one gold. So I just gain a gold. That's fantastic. And now you see the issue that I have here. These cards have to be outright or else how else would I possibly gain a gold if there's no gold to gain? So uh, we revealed and we resolved the new card. So I gained a gold. Hooray for me. So now it's my opponent's turn. So they would have one dice in front of them. They would draw one die. And now obviously what they want to try and do is they want to try and gain gold as well. So for this one, they would have to put the six right here because it goes on top of the five, and then the four right there, which now means they would trigger the four action. So boom, they would get that. Uh, they would get a gold card, woo, and that would be the end of their turn. The six does not trigger because it's not the lowest number. So let's roll the dice for me again, and let's see what I got. I got a one and a four, so once again, uh, that's it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to take the four, I'm going to gain a gold, and then it's my opponent's turn. And let's see, uh, still not very much popping going on here. So he would obviously do the two, three here because he can't play anything on top of the six. He would take the three, he would get a gold and we would continue about on our merry way. And now this is where things get interesting. So I can't even play this one. This one, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I can still play this six right here. And now I'm gonna actually trigger two abilities because there's a six here and there's a six here and you do it from left to right. So for this particular example, I would take this six right here. I would put a new card. All players gain one gold, so everybody gains a gold, which isn't really that great for me. And then I would also gain this six right here, which means I'm going to be rolling three dice next turn instead of two, and I would gain one gold, which means I would already be at four gold, technically. Uh, so I'm very close to winning the entire game. It's a very short game. So now the next person would go, they'd roll their two dice, and they have a three and a three, 
And at this place, they would probably do this right here because that way they would gain a gold and I would not gain a gold. And we'd get to the next turn and I would probably win the game because I would gain the gold. So I almost forgot, I probably should show you some of the other cards in the game because this game actually has a lot of drinking rules in it. So all players lose one gold. If you empty your mug, you earn one gold. Empty your mug and you can go next whenever that's activated. Uh, all players gain one dwarf, which means you gain one die. Steal one gold. This one's going to allow you to set all top dwarfs to rank one, which means you're going to trigger a lot of stuff potentially. Uh, orc blockade, reverse the turn order. Uh, poorest player gains a gold. Kill the tallest dwarf stack. Gain one gold. There's one that's gonna, what's the, there's a cave in where you turn all cards to the deck. Uh, end your turn on the Tentacle Horror, so obviously you don't want to activate that one. Uh, Iron Army, take two dwarves from anywhere. So lots of various different cards that will shake up the game. Just in that particular example, we did not get to them. But that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to do inside the game. All right then, dwarves, dig, delve, die from Inbalance Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. First on the con side, the rule card needs to be better. It needs to be a rule book or it needs to be a more full-fledged rule card. Hey, next time let's go for three cards instead of two cards because I'm not 100% sure if I'm actually playing the game correctly. And the big bugaboo here is I'm not sure if you're supposed to shuffle in the gold cards into the deck because the rule cards don't ever specifically say whether or not you were supposed to do this. Now, I assume that you were not supposed to do that because in my personal opinion, that would completely break the game. And I think it would make it a terrible game. But the backs of the cards are the same. And on the, uh, on the details card, it specifically says uh, during a cave-in, you shuffle all the cards in. Not all the action cards, not all the dive cards, just all the cards in. So it really should have been clear there. Now that being said, I'm pretty sure that you're supposed to uh, keep them to the side because there's a card that allows you to gain gold. And if there's no pile of gold to gain, then I don't know how else you would gain gold. Also, uh, there's a three gold in here, which if you could just randomly get three gold, that's completely stupid and broken because, you know, well, that's 60% of what you need to win the game. So I assume I'm playing it the correct way, but if I'm not, I immediately do not recommend this game. Another comment I have in this game is it has drinking cards in there. Not drinking rules, not a drinking variant. It actually has drinking cards in there, which just seems terribly out of place. This is a family weight game. It's a light filler weight game. I played this in my classroom with seven and eight and nine and 10 year olds. And then we got to cards where we're like, finish your mug and gain a gold or finish your mug and take the next turn. And we're like, what? Uh, yeah, we're just not gonna play with those weird cards. It'd be like if you were playing Ticket to Ride, and all of a sudden you drew a card and it was like, this is a wild, but only if you finish your drink. And it's like, what? What the hell are you doing, Days of Wonder? Um, they seem really out of place. They seem like they should have been an expansion to the game. Now, that being said, I really do like the drinking version of this game, which I'll talk more about in the pros, but if you're looking at this as a family weight game, you're probably not going to play with those cards, so be forewarned about that. Another comment of this game is the cards are very thick and sturdy, but that also means that they're hard to kind of shuffle and separate. It's a minor nitpick because you're not going to be doing it terribly often, but it is something that I did want to mention. Any other cons I have of the game? Oh, the game's very short. The game is very, very short. It says 30 minutes to play. Get out of here with that. Uh, you're going to be gaining gold very easily. Your turns are going to go by very quickly. It's very random. This game is very random as you're going to be rolling the dice and then just placing the dice uh, where you can a lot of the time. You know, as you get more cards out there, there's definitely more strategery in the game. But when you're first starting the game and there's only like two or three or four cards to put out there, it, there's just not as many choices as you might like in the game. And the game shows short, which means you're not going to get to see all the really cool cards. And there are some really cool cards in this game. And I like... The cool cards, well, that's why I'm calling them cool cards, but you're not going to have the most opportunity to see those cards in a lot of the games, which is a little bit of a bummer. In fact, in the middle part, I only played a two-player version of the game, which is not something that you can actually do, but you saw it ended very quickly, and a three-player version of the game is much in the same ilk, where you're not going to get to see all the cards that you might want to see in the game. So I wish there was more of those cool cards and less of the straightforward cards in the game. Any other cons I have of the game? No. Moving on to the pros, this is an okay game. That's what I can say. I, I did not like it as a filler weight game. It just did not have enough meat on the bones to be a filler weight game for me personally. Uh, as a family game, I don't know. It just wasn't as interesting as I might want it to be. I wish it was a little bit lengthier. And I'm sure you could play it where you go to seven or eight gold instead of just five gold. But it just it was too short, to be honest with you, for us to really sink our teeth into it. 
But as a drinking game, I actually really did enjoy it with the drinking cards and playing it while we were drinking. And I think that's really where this game hits its niche, at least for me personally. But that's such a narrow niche that I have a hard time recommending this game. I feel like this is a great bar game. I feel like this is a great get together and socialize and have a couple drinks and chuck some dice and, you know, stack the dice and laugh at somebody when they knock over the pile uh, of dice kind of game. But as a gamery game, I have a hard time recommending delve or dwarves dig delve die i can just think of a lot of other better games even games that have dwarven themes and digging themes that i like better at this weight and so in the end i have a hard time recommending dwarves dig delve die i'm not going to be keeping this game but i am going to be giving it to my buddy who i primarily go over there to drink and play games with him because i feel like it really is a good to great sit around and ch you know chum it up with other people and drink kind of game but as a gamery game not nearly as much as i was hoping it to be because the length of the game just does not let you explore the game as much as you might want it to so that is dwarves dig delve die one that's a very hard recommendation unless you're looking for a fun game to drink a couple beers sit around a table and chuck some dice with in which case yeah i can kind of can recommend that game if you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what's a game like that. What's a game that you like to play, but only if you're socializing, maybe have a couple drinks, and you just want to, you know, not think too hard about the game. What's another game like that for, for you? For me personally, uh, I feel that way kind of about Munchkin, you know. I, I enjoy Munchkin, but that's the kind of one where I got to be socializing and having a couple drinks. You know, that's not the kind of thing I ever bust out at a game night. But let me know in the comments below, what's a game like that for you? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.